Hey there, and welcome to an update. An update on this. The IBM PS2 Model 50. I finally got it working, and I finally got it able to boot. So, we're gonna open it up, I'm gonna show you what I did, then we're gonna get an operating system installed on it and see what we can do with it. Let's go. Alrighty, so as you may remember, I had tons of issues with this thing just due to its hard drive not working and other weird issues. So, after I open this up, I will show you what I did to actually get this to work. So normally, this thing has an MFM hard drive in it and a special IBM PS2 controller card, but now it does not. Now it's got something different. Okay, so originally in this system was a hard drive like this. It says an MFM drive with a custom connector. By custom, I just mean proprietary to this PS2 system. There should be an ST506 drive, but the only way to interface with it is with the card that came with the system, which would be this one. Just in, This is the um, standard hard drive controller card that came in the system. I've tried multiple versions of this controller card. I've tried multiple hard drives. In fact, I have like three of these, I think, and none of them work. No combination of these drives or any controller card I have or don't have or whatever. It doesn't work. I just can't get it to work with this or this or any combination. So I had to go a slightly different route. As you may be able to tell here, I went with a SCSI hard drive. I managed to find on eBay a SCSI adapter for this system and managed to get a hard drive that I had lying around work with it. So finding hardware for this thing since it uses MCA or microchannel architecture is a little complicated because I can't just get a normal like PCI or ISA card and throw it in here. No, I have to get an MCA card which is only used in this system. So looking around eBay I did find a SCSI card for it and the first one I got was this one. This one is made by a company called Mountain Network Solutions and see right here it's got a 50 pin SCSI port. It's even got an external SCSI port but one problem with this is it does not have a SCSI BIOS on it so when I put this thing in and I connect a hard drive to it nothing happens. Like I think this card can probably see the hard drive but it can't boot into the hard drive and so I can't really do anything with it because it won't initialize in the BIOS because it doesn't have a BIOS on it so it just sits and nothing happens. I even tried booting into DOS of a floppy disk and tried to read any fixed disks that were in the system and nothing. So unless I need like a, unless I could find like a special driver or something, I think this thing is only really meant for like tape drives or something. So unfortunately I cannot use this. So I had to find something else. So that something else that I found was this. This is an MCA card, as you can see. This is a SCSI controller made by a company called Future Domain. I wonder if this will focus on it. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, this chip right here is a BIOS chip. So this card has a BIOS in it, which means when I boot it up, this card has an option ROM that boots up, and then I can actually boot into a hard drive. And then from that hard drive, I can actually boot into an operating system. Finally, I finally have an OS I can boot on this machine without needing to use a floppy drive. I can install things on the hard drive and use the hard drive. It's, it's great. This thing was pretty hard to find and I've only able to find like one of these on eBay. Just a bit like a mountain card. I think I found one of those on eBay and bought it. And I found one of these on eBay and bought it. So you may notice some other interesting things in this case that may not be standard to a PS2 system. This cable here. So, what this cable here is, the Molex cable. What I did was, I found online, you can just solder a Molex cable to this board here. On this board you can see our two floppy connectors. And so, on the back, I just took, this is from just an extension cable I got. I snipped off one end, soldered the two power lines to here soldered the two ground lines as well. I will post in the description um, the pinout for this. It's pretty simple. And so now I have a Molex cable in the system. 
I would show you a video of me soldering this, but I am really bad at soldering, and you don't need to see all the solder joints and hot glue and all the crap on the back of this board. Just know that it works, there are no shorts, it's perfectly fine. For the hard drive, I just happen to have a couple of SCSI drives lying around from I don't remember where, and the one I decided to go with in this system is this Quantum Fireball. As you may notice, it has an Apple logo on it. It was from some sort of Mac system. There was some sort of Mac partition on here, but there wasn't, wasn't any data on it. It looked like all the data was deleted, or the drive may have been reformatted or something. So, I did, after, after that, I reformatted it myself so I can put it in here and use it. I did make a backup of the drive, but any forensics showed that there was just no data in there. So, normally, the hard drive that was in the system would screw onto a drive sled and clip into here. But this hard drive is a slightly different size, so as you can see, it's only being held on to the drive set with one single screw, which is right here. So it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite fit on the sled here. But the screws lot line up, so there's no, nothing else I can do. But I do wonder, like, this card was sold for this system, and it has an internal SCSI connector. Like, where do they expect you to mount a hard drive in this? This just wasn't made for the Model 50, this was just made for a different system, but it works with it. So in case you're wondering about this Molex connector on the SCSI adapter, um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that for some SCSI devices you could have it be powered over the SCSI connector. So you would plug the Molex into here, and then you would have this power the drive. Again, I'm wondering if this wasn't made for this system because I had to manually add this Molex power cable to it, so maybe this is made for another system that had Molex on the power supply directly. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put this back in, and we're going to get the system booted up, and I'll show you what happens. Alright, i got our machine back together. Luckily, there's cases, plenty of room for the SCSI cable and Molex cable. I got myself a nice DS2 keyboard here, and we're going to fire this thing up and see what it does. Alright, our machine is booting up now. We get our memory test, showing us our full one megabyte of RAM. There we go. And now something interesting should appear on the screen. We should see. Here we go. Our SCSI BIOS. Future domain. Sees our quantum fireball. I didn't mention before, that hard drive is 500 megabytes. Though, unfortunately, right now, I only have, I think, a 32 megabyte partition or something, which could be because I'm using DOS 3. I don't know if any other versions of DOS would let me use a bigger partition size, or maybe I can use some sort of like extended partition or something to use the full space. But anyway, as you can see, we are on IBM PC DOS 3.3 here that booted off of the hard drive. This is not a full install, it's literally just I did format slash S using the floppy disk to just, you know, copy the system files over. So, it's got command com, and that's about it. Once I get DOS fully correctly installed, there are some drivers I need to install. Though mostly, I'll just need to install the drivers for the network card. I don't think there's any other drivers I really need to install. With only one meg of RAM, I don't think I need any sort of, like, high mem or any sort of memory management driver like that. And there's no other hardware in here, like, there's no sound card or anything fancy, so... Anyway, let's get a version of DOS installed on here. Now, I'm not sure which version I want to use. As you see right now, it's just got 3.3, so I'm wondering what I want to put on here. Since this is an IBM, I think I want to use some version of IBM PC DOS compared to using MS DOS. I guess I can go the latest and use IBM PC DOS 7 or IBM PC DOS 2000. But I'm going to look into it a little bit and see what version of IBM PC DOS would be the best for this, and then we'll get that installed. Hi there, and welcome back. After some thinking about it, I decided to go with the latest um, PC DOS 2000, which, as you can see here, calls itself PC DOS 7, but PC DOS 2000 is just PC DOS 7 with some Y2K add ons and such. So, let's go through this installation here, and see what we got. 
Let's see. I guess that's fine. Ooh, I can use an ISO font. Do I want to do that? Mmm, eh, don't need that. USD for keyboard is fine. That looks, that looks fine. Let's continue. Oh, what do we have here? Something called PenDOS. I don't know what that is. The DOS shell. I don't think I need that. PCMCAA. Yeah, I don't think this thing supports that. Antivirus. Don't need that. Rex. I think this is sort of this is some sort of programming language. I don't really care about that. Some sort of compression, a backup thing, which I'm just gonna remove and save some hard drive space. CDOS is fine. Let's go. Previous DOS pass this. Backup. No. Install. Oh, I was hoping this would reformat my disk. I guess not. I guess it's just gonna install to the disk that's already there. Like I said, I think I have a 32 meg partition. It's actually more than enough for this. Um, so interestingly, this came on six floppy disks. So I had to write six floppy disks. Remember that guy? I mean, you had to, you know, write a whole bunch of floppy disks, or you having to swap out floppy disks during the install. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you sit through the entire install and have to click through each of the six floppy disks, so. As you can see here, interestingly, this install program looks kind of like MS-DOS install program and even some other Windows install programs since, at least at the beginning, DOS was, you know, made on Microsoft and IBM, I think, something like that. So, this is PC-DOS, this the IBM version. I think this is after Microsoft and IBM split and started making their own versions, but I guess the setup still looks the same. So, as you can see, it's still installing, and I will um, stop the video and restart it once this is finished. Well, it looks like we're at 100% complete here. So interestingly, during the installation, it only asked me for a certain number of disks. It didn't ask me for all of them. Presumably because I um, unchecked some of the options there, so we didn't need all of the disks. Um, what we have here? Sure, because I don't think I had these anyway. Go ahead and edit. Auto exec for me, PC DOS. And here we go. Ooh. Welcome to the e editor. Changes by setup. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, and disclose that. Echo off and DOS key. Okay, sure, close that. And it looks like we are using high mem here and it loads DOS into high memory. All right, let's see if that works. Let's do it. And we wait for it to reboot. There's our SCSI controller again, our quantum fireball, and There we go, booting into PC DOS off of the hard drive. DOS key installed. Looking pretty good. Is it mem I think on DOS? Yeah, there we go. Cool. Looks like extended memory is working. Right, because I guess anything over 640k is technically extended memory. And looks like DOS is running in, or it should be running in memory, and looks like Everything is good here. Hey there. So, I've copied Planet X3 to the system, but actually I did something a little bit um, interesting before doing this. I realized that if I reformatted the disk using the PCDOS 7 installer, or rather used FDisk from the installer disk, I can actually format the entire disk. So now I have a whole 500 megabytes instead of only 32. So, for fun, let's just run Planet X3. There's no sound card on here, but one day I do want to buy an LPL2 LPT to get sound on here, but... As you can hear, hopefully hear, 
the PC speaker works fine, and as I'm pretty sure I've showed before, this game runs perfectly fine on this system. I mean, designed for these systems. So this game runs fine, runs perfectly fine in this, you know, VGA color mode. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Go ahead and exit that. Alright, one more thing I'm going to do in the system is just run, check it real quick. I'm um, just curious. Let's see what it tells me. Let's see, it's the DOS version S7, which is PC DOS 2000, identifies itself as PC DOS 7, so that is fine. The ROM BIOS is IBM. You can see that it's micro channel, and apparently the hard drive is actually 545 megabytes, so that's cool. Mouse, none. I could install a mouse driver, or, you know, plug in a PS2 mouse and install a mouse driver, but I didn't feel like doing that right now. One thing I'm curious about is I want to measure the um, hard disk speed here on this hard disk benchmark real quick. I didn't manage to benchmark the original hard drive in this since, well, it didn't work. I never managed to get it to appear in FDisk or appear in the system as anything, so I wouldn't be able to run this there. But I want to run this here, and apparently it says it's a high-performance hard drive. I mean, I guess that's good. It, uh, looks pretty good. I mean, it's a SCSI drive, and generally these SCSI drives are pretty fast, so... Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this machine. So I think that's about it for this, uh, this video here. In another video, I'm probably going to install Windows on here. Um, Windows 2, I guess, because I don't know what other version of Windows would work on a, a 286. And I'll probably install the network drivers on here and see what I can do with the network card. I don't know how much the network card can really do. I mean, I, I probably can't load a website, obviously, but maybe I could connect to, like, an FTP server running on my home server and copy files that way, which would be a lot more convenient than copying files over floppy disks. Or maybe I can get this to talk to my other 286 that also has a uh, Ethernet card in it and copy files between those two systems. That could be fun. So, anyway... I'm going to end this video here, so thank you for watching.